downtown LA South Park District. An area that was once treated like the long lost and forgotten stepchild of the city, it was a no man's land that was primarily a commercial zone and really didn't have a lot going on relative to the rest of downtown. But that all changed back in 1999 after the development of a little known venue you might have heard of called the Staples Center. The Staples Center put a spotlight on downtown and put us right on the map. And with that, the developers started pouring right in. As the epicenter of the city's luxury high-rise condominiums, hotels, LA Live, Convention Center, Microsoft Theater, and much more, was once a quiet part of town, is now the intersection of sports, entertainment, and of course, dining. One of the first entrants to the South Park dining scene was Barcito, a local Argentinian bistro located a few blocks from Staples Center that mixes a little bit of the old downtown with a little bit of the new. And you can immediately tell from the vibe when you walk in that it's balanced just right. At the helm of Barcito is Andrea Borgia, a local Angelino, visionary, and a member of the Zagat 30 Under 30, who had the vision to see the future in downtown, and more specifically, South Park. Part Argentinian bistro, part cocktail bar, part local neighborhood hangout, Barcito has everything you can ask for. It's versatile, it's comforting, non-pretentious, and in every sense of the word, satisfying. We were lucky enough to be invited for an inside look of Barcito, and of course, jumped at the opportunity. So, thank you for having us here today. We are in a bistro bar. First off, tell us what Barcito is all about. Yeah, so we're a Latin American cafe, cocktail bar, so we do kind of sandwiches and coffee during the day, and then transition into happy hour, bar bites, craft cocktails, natural wine at night. How did Barcito come about? I mean, why Argentina? Why, why this? So, my mother is from Argentina. My grandparents live in Buenos Aires spent my entire life kind of visiting them and wasn't necessarily inspired by the cuisine, but by those kind of classic corner cafe bars that are sort of staples of their neighborhood. So folks can kind of pop in, grab a quick coffee or cocktail, or turn it into a full experience. Kind of like you're a neighborhood spot right here in South Park. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. So you are a native Angelino then? We can I sure say. am. Okay. Yeah. Just bounce around Florida, New York, back over. Exactly. And when you were when you were originally here, I mean, what was downtown back well, then? Well, I don't know. You know, I come to the garment district, go to dim sum with my family, but uh, definitely wasn't a place you're caught past three or four p.m. So right. so very different now than it was when I was a kid. So what inspired you or moved you or motivated you to open up in downtown then? I mean, there was a lot that was appealing to me. I think having lived in New York, having been kind of part of that sort of urban neighborhood, mm. I love the walkability, the access to public transportation. Uh, the South Park in particular really caught my eye when I learned about just the density of residential growth that was here. And it really just kind of fit into my vision for, for this sort of neighborhood meeting place. What's, what's changed about this area? I mean, so Since much, you know, on our corner at least, we used to be surrounded by parking lots, which are all now luxury apartment buildings oh. um, that are all open as of two weeks ago, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, so, yeah, even across the so street. So it's been incredible to kind of, I mean, you know, being in a big construction site has its challenges, <laughs> but hopefully we'll start to, to reap some of the benefits of that pretty soon here. Well, all right, let's get to, uh, I don't want to say the main part, but the main part. <laughs> what do we have in front of us? Uh, braised pork empanada, basically Ooh. pork shoulder tomato sauce that we make braised for about four or five hours. It gets folded into kind of a flaky pastry and chimichurri aioli on the base of the plate. And this guy right here. Yeah, so we got Ooh. fried chicken sandwich, brioche bun, house-made mustard aioli, buttermilk fried chicken, that cabbage carrot, and then kind of pickled portito slaw that's tossed in a tapatio honey. Wow. Let's do it. Let's do it. You start with that one, I'll start with this one. All right, game All right. On. Pretend nobody's watching, just eat. Mmm. <laughs> Pretty good. Amazing. It tastes like a mix of um, carnitas a little bit and like pulled pork barbecue. Yeah, it's got a, some of those got, flavors. There's something sticking out of it though. Some, it's not your typical empanada. Like Argentines will come through the door and you know, try our empanadas and they're like, this is different than anything I've ever tried. Fusion is good. I mean, I think fusion defines Barcito in general. You're part bistro, part cafe, part bar, part just Barcito. I guess yeah. that's what you are. A little LA means Buenos Aires. Mm. All right, now I'm getting jealous of you uh, eating right. that fried chicken. I gotta get a little piece. Switch. So you said a tapatio honey. Tapatio honey. I wanna see yeah, how that's done. Yeah, tapatio honey, and then uh, mm. we toss a little of the pickling liquid in there as well. Wow, it looks kind amazing. Of give it some acidity. Oh wow. 
And that is amazing. I wanted to see how you would set this apart as a fried chicken sandwich. I mean, talk to me. I'll talk to you after I eat. No. <laughs> Um, Cause you have obviously the Nashville hot chicken places open up. You have Birdie. You have the traditional, you know, fried chicken sandwiches. Now I wouldn't say this is necessarily Argentinian, but it's your own sure. little. I guess it's your own little take on it, but it definitely is unique. Ooh, more food. What do we have here? Provolone cheese, basically tossed in a breadcrumb mixture that's seasoned with oregano, fried, Ooh. melty, gooey, pull apart for, for Instagram. Oh my god. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm. Pretty simple, but if you're drinking a beer. Mm. Mm. If that's simple, give me a more simple. It is a little different than a mozzarella stick mozzarella bite. Yeah. And he said, what are these dipping sauces? Cilantro crema and a marinara. Ooh. Let's try this. Mm. Beef empanada time? Beef empanada time. You All took right. the words out of my mouth. Can you do yeah. the honors of chopping into that? I guess so. Yeah. It's like the ribbon ribbon cutting ceremony. Oh wow. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. This so this is like you said, this is your favorite? You have other empanadas on the menu as well, right? Four. So you have pork. This amazing beef one. Artichoke, is that correct? No, what's Artichoke is our vegetarian option. And right. then uh, arroz con pollo. So oh. like chicken and rice. Oh, Ooh, and now some cocktails. Thank you. Thank you. So what do we have? All right, so we've got the Pisco Boulevard. Pisco? Uh, Pisco. Okay. Basil, lemon, little simple syrup in there, a little Saint Germain, so mm. elderflower liqueur. Okay. Uh, just kind of really bright and refreshing and herbaceous for the basil. Cool. Snip it all in. Ah. Ooh, that's good. It's different. It's not like something I've tasted before. I mean, I didn't know what to expect. What's the main cocktail? Uh, the main uh, liquor in here? Pisco. Pisco. All right. And what do we have here? Let's, are you trying to get me drunk? You said it. Okay. All right. Fine. Pink sangria. So rose wine, a little bit of mm. peach, a little lemon, uh, caña brava, light rum, and orange zest. Garnish. Cool. Rosé and, and rum? Yeah, rosé and rum. Okay. Not as sweet as most sangrias, I think. Kind of try to still strike that balance. Mmm. Delicious. And not too sweet, like you said. Yeah. Might have made the peach snapple but way better, obviously. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Delicious. Now, let me ask you this. What's next for Barcito? It's hard to say. You know, I think we're still in a neighborhood that's figuring itself out a little bit. And so, you know, just kind of watching these buildings start to fill up and and really try and kind of continue to build this community that we're really excited to be in. Let me ask you this, happy hour? Yes. We do have a happy, happy hour. hour. Aperitivo hour is what we call Aperitivo it. Aperitivo hour. So kind of inspired by that very Argentine, very Italian afternoon cocktail that mm -hmm. you know, has a lot of Aperol, a lot of Campari, and then all of our drinks on our happy hour menu come with a little snack trio. So chips, wow. Peruvian corn nuts, and Casable Tron olives. Cool, because no neighborhood bar would be complete without happy hour, right? Correct. Cool. So much for having us. Yes, Thank you, yeah. ladies, for the yeah. happy hour segment. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Here's to Barcito. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.